pushing pixels, so you have compositing department, 3D department, mm -hmm. like modeling. Uh, my, actually, I have my, my friend with whom we used to work in visual effects, is now working at ILM. I said, well, and he basically hates, he hates his life. Because I said, Carl, what have you been doing? Well, I just basically spent like three months lighting with the, lighting the dinosaur, right? Yeah. So you have this incredible, and this is of course what Marx has been writing about, this incredible specialization of labor. But to what extent, of course, I think it's a kind of process of destruction, but also creation, right? Uh, but of course, not everybody can make a transition. No. Right? Uh, maybe I was smart enough to leave this field and to go to academia, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, because what I find is also, you know, unless people kind of moved up and became directors, you know, you kind of get stuck. But uh, so, so I think I think it's like two processes, right? Of both kind of destruction and creation, and also I think what happens is that. But at the same time, uh, again, this is not my opinion. I mean, this is what everybody has been writing right for the last five years. I mean, there is a sense, right? There is a real sense which people have, and maybe everybody is wrong, but you, right? A, you find this like everywhere, right? You know newspapers, news, internet, that there is a certain democratization of production. So okay. to that extent, you could have a person sitting with his laptop and doing a work which before would require you know, a whole company. Uh, okay. And you know, we also have like virtual companies, right? So I'm here, you're in Shanghai, etc., etc. And uh, so I think, what, so my sense is that in some cases, like, you know, things can go back to the, this kind of specialization of labor, in large scale industrial production, except the jobs are different. So instead of eating cells, you know, I don't do wire removal. But at the same time, it does seem to be that there is this kind of shift towards uh, uh, this kind of this I mean, democratization in the sense that what before would require a whole company can now, can, can now be done by one person. Right? So that's my sense of that. You, know? yeah. you guys, you guys yeah. know as much about it as much as I do. So but also with other industries open up because of that, you know, like it's not just one person with this, it's 50 people, it's like different people get different right. jobs. Like right. you know, lots of 20 year olds, lots of people in Bangalore, like whatever, but you know, it's just a different, a different subset. And I was also thinking uh, the, 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 and it, this is also coming to the fore today, which has to do with. Uh, the ownership, uh, intellectual property rights, or as some people call imaginary property rights. Uh, the uh, the strength of all this is that you're able to get an enormous amount of work done very quickly, mm -hmm. and in a fantastically detailed fashion. The problem is that the output is digital, and so therefore it's just a, it's just a number, technically. Yes. So you so just you just a set of numbers. Yeah, it's not even a set of numbers. It's one some number. numbers are more valuable than other numbers. Exactly, and so now you can technically, if you have, if you own a particular piece, you have a copyright on a particular piece number. of digital media. You have a copyright on that number. So why? But why do you say it's one number? And usually it's like it's a string of one and zeros. So you just add them all up. And yeah, it's yeah, okay, yeah, but no, but, 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 but okay. it's a sequence. But it so does so. okay. But yeah, but it does okay. But it does stand for let's say three D models or three D lights or pixels. I mean, basically, <coughs> yeah. basically <coughs> signifies like, a set of different objects, right? Yeah. But it's okay. But yeah, but so right, it's basically, it's basically, I would say it's a long. Well, I wouldn't say it's one number. It's a long string. It's a long string it's of long string. symbols. Yeah, and. Uh, so that these are instantly copyable and reproducible, right. and thanks to you know the whole notion of uh, simulation and simulacra, yeah. that whole thing. So you just end up with this massive overproduction, and I think that's that's one of the problems that we're actually facing today, and why we're having such a big problem with our economy is that we we're actually facing a similar problem in the twenties where we had a, they had an overproduction that's of right. material we objects. We had to destroy things. We had to go destroy food and things like that. Yeah, and now we're looking at an overproduction of digital media and an overproduction of information, and there's no way to uh, make a dime on it because it's everywhere. There's no scarcity, so and everybody can copy it by like crazy. No, so but there's, there's scarcity because good information you still have to pay for. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, but the, <laughs> still, yeah, 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 there is there is there are different it's levels of information, and and there's people who you know there's there's market for information. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, uh, but information is also, you know, the, the DVD with the movie on it. Okay, 
that is now instantly replicable and distributable. Oh, that, that's an industry that is the industry industrial model which is collapsing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but that's not. Uh, but that has like very real world, very actual consequences. People are, you know, yeah. things are. Yeah. What about the theater? Fosterance. Right? I, I like to watch yeah. a movie in the theater. Mm -hmm. and sit in the seat and watch this large screen. I don't that's because I have to deal with an audience that's completely disrupting my experience. They, they laugh, they're, they're on the phone. I hate yeah. it. I'd rather watch a movie at home. I don't what know. about the theater? <laughs> the theaters I go to aren't like that. But that's what you pay for now. You pay for experience, you pay for person to person contact, you pay for their time, just so you can have that. And you're not paying for the information so much anymore because that's easily accessible from anywhere in the world. And I, I mean, I was, it's, just, it's interesting. I'm not going to mention the company, but I, I have now a series of lectures from. It's actually from a different company, uh, but uh, I was just over a friend, uh, with a friend today, we just, ex he, I, he found out he had these lectures, I found out, we, and we cr uh, exchanged lect lectures today, so now we've got like, uh, um, class, classroom lectures from like all these, uh, from this company that produces these lecture series, and um, I mean, that's basically a education right there, you know, it's a, I think it's something like the, 30, I mean, I'm sorry, like, uh, like three gigs of just audio MP3s, and it's probably, pro um, what are you <laughs> oh, I, I listen to them every day, so it, it's just, um, it's, it, it's like, I, I, I mean, I, I listen to these every day, not here, I mean, here I only listen to a couple, but at home I listen to a lecture hour, hour or two every day, and after 20 days you get an entire course. I can do five hundred. <laughs> I would love to have them, but uh, I might be swamped now. But, uh, it's a lawyer, right? It's a lawyer. It would be nice, but that's the point. We're swamped with information. Yeah. Yeah. Well, information, the cost of information is close to zero, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so but people do pay for it. There's so. there attention, right? There's time, there's experience, there's spatial ambience, right? There's a face to face contact, there's a networking, right? So maybe you, I like your right, recommendation letter, right? I mean, there's other things. Uh, no, but I'm saying other things will become valuable, right? But there will always be a human element to all of this stuff. Like even though industries change and people lose jobs and software does this and that, I mean, we need people to operate the damn stuff in the first place. It'd be different if it's at the point where it can just, we just, it can just go on its own and create for us. But we're always necessary. As, all, as long as we keep creating things where we're necessary, I think a, a number of these things won't die. Like I don't think film is going to die. But what if that like happens? What if it doesn't need you anymore? Is that so? Is that so? If it doesn't need us to watch it, anymore. then we'll. Well, what then if it doesn't need you to, to do anything? Then what? Then we'll do something else. <laughs> well, what, I want to go back to I want to go back to the the idea of this kind of fading sign of terrestrial experience, which is what you're kind of dealing with in this uh, in these effects, which are originally artifacts of. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tenuous, this kind of connection, which is sort of, yeah, uh, which is more like a, tra like a trace, almost like, a, almost like a, the first we thought where it was physical like replicant, turns yeah. out we just, we just kind of traces, right? It's like, yeah, okay, we have some, it's like, you know, we have a, well, I mean, again, you know, I just want to say this biological metaphor, you know, how we have certain parts in our body which are like from millions of years ago, like no longer functional, yeah. right? But please go ahead. Yeah, so what, what, as you were saying about, like, and, and as you saw in the example with the lens flare, yeah. like, uh, that's a lens flare applied to a completely artificial setting, but it still triggers a, a identi uh, our identified response that somehow there's a lot of sun there, or somehow this is a comfortable uh, atmosphere, that's a, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a natural atmosphere. So, yeah. so, so I want to ask. A, I want to ask a question. I want to ask if it's okay. I want to ask a question uh, in regard to it because you know. So I told you like so you know what I what I feel, what I feel pretty confident about. So eventually like, I said okay. So I kind of put this in the book and the book has been online since November. So I'm going to like change it a little bit in the summer. But now like I want to ask you about the part which I don't really have an answer, right? So okay. So you and me, right? You and me. At least some of us in the room. Remember of cinema, right? Grew up in the 20th century. So at least when I say lens flare, I mean definitely, let's say, a set of effects, right? Meanings, effects, intensities, whatever, right? Which I get activated you know, in, my, in, my, in my brain. Part of it is this media memory. And it's like, you know, when we started today, you get this fantastic kind of semiotic analysis of 
this one design, how it has